Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. This age-old nursery rhyme comes from an eternal fascination with the stars. For as long as humans have walked the earth, the stars have been a source of fascination and inspiration. Those distant beacons of light beckon to us here on earth and inspire us in a way that nothing else can or ever will. One of my most vivid memories of my childhood is watching my favorite movie, Race to Space, for the first time. It's a fictionalized telling of the United States space program, NASA, launching America's first astronaut, a chimpanzee named Ham, into space. I've always loved the part where the rocket lifts off the launch pad and the cheesy music plays in the background, because I am filled with a sense of pride. I felt that same pride when I was six years old, and I watched as the rover's spirit and opportunity landed on Mars, and again when curiosity landed. That pride comes from appreciation and understanding of the value and need for space exploration. In 1958, the National Aeronautics and Space Act was passed, and NASA was born. The creation of NASA sparked a period of innovation, exploration, and advance that rivals that of the Industrial Revolution. The United States and the world flourished. But now, the dreams that were the foundation of that period are fading, and that urge to explore is almost gone. Our country and our world are falling apart, and the agencies with the most power to bring them back are underfunded. To bring back the dreams and innovations that will truly push our country and our world forward, there needs to be a resurgence of energy put into the development and support of the programs that make space exploration possible. In 2011, the last space shuttle was retired, and US-based human space exploration ended. Yes, other countries are still sending manned missions into space. And while the whole world ought to be proud of the human race going to space, I cringe because I know that while other countries still put emphasis on space exploration, my country has pushed it aside. The reason it's not the US up there is that NASA's budget has been made to be so small that they have had to cut and or decrease the size of many of their programs. Just how small is NASA's budget? NASA gets a half of a penny of the tax dollar. The amount of money spent bailing out the banks after the recession in 2008 was more than the lifetime budget of NASA. Now, this matters because with the development of a strong space program come countless benefits that impact every part of life. The benefits of a program like NASA can be seen in the economy, technology, the job market, as well as literature and the arts. NASA is responsible for creating technologies that have allowed doctors to do something as simple as take temperatures through infrared ear thermometers, to something as incredible as performing life-saving surgeries with robotic arms. Now, even if you're not a doctor, or you have no plans of working with advanced technology, NASA has still impacted your life. NASA is responsible for creating everyday items like water filtration systems designed for use aboard the International Space Station. Memory foam mattresses, designed for safer landings for astronauts in the space shuttle, and even LASIK eye surgery, the algorithms for which were designed for docking the space shuttle on the International Space Station. Now, these innovations do not just happen by themselves. NASA partners with companies around the country and provides money for jobs, which in turn benefits the economy. In 2011, NASA spent $1.2 billion investing in companies nationwide and nine million right here in Utah. This money is a huge part of national and statewide economies. The return on money put into NASA can be seen in a study done by the Midwest Research Institute that states that the 25 million spent on NASA between 1959 and 1969 returned an estimated $181 billion by 1987. This alone shows what a beneficial effect NASA had on the economy in the first two thirds of its lifetime. That effect, however, is dwindling, and that's the problem. The very creation of NASA and the placement of emphasis on space exploration has allowed for advancement that has been instrumental in the past half century. But as we lose that urge to explore, we lose all the benefits that come along with it. So we know there's a problem. Space exploration is being tossed aside, swept under the rug. 
How do we fix this problem? It's quite simple, actually. We allocate more funding to the programs that make space exploration possible. Why should this valuable money go to the space exploration instead of to schools or to pay off the debt? Why spend money up in space when there are significant problems down here on Earth that need fixing? Simply put, here's why. Someday, a killer asteroid is going to come straight for Earth. And all those problems down here are going to become meaningless. While it's important to fix problems on Earth, we must look toward the future. And the future lies in space and science. Furthermore, according to astrophysicist, director of New York City's Hayden Planetarium, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the strength of economies in the 21st century will be determined by the amount invested in science and technology. NASA is capable of inspiring future generations of Americans to go into the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Those people need to be pushed forward and supported because they're the ones who make tomorrow happen. Now, Besides all the wonderful economic and technological benefits of NASA, is something that I believe is even more important, the urge to dream. In a book called Space Chronicles, Dr. Tyson states the soul of NASA's mission can be captured by the sheer joy of exploration and discovery. NASA inspires the nation in a way that nothing else can or ever will. And in some ways, that urge to dream is more important than the money, the technology, or the discoveries. In the United States in the 1960s, the space program was the country's pride and joy. People united around NASA as a common goal. We were truly, we the people. But now we are a nation divided against itself. We fight more internally than we do externally. However, I believe there is a solution. I believe in space. I believe in NASA. I believe a strong space program has the power to spark a new flame that can truly push both our country and our world forward. Now, this is not to say that space exploration is a perfect endeavor. There have been mistakes made, lives lost, and disaster felt. But what came of each of those failures made them not failures, but new starting points. After the disasters of the space shuttles Challenger and Columbia, the whole country gathered behind NASA to mourn the loss of the astronauts. And then they supported NASA in the mission to finish out what those brave souls had started. When there was talk of shutting down the Hubble Space Telescope, the source of the most stunning photos of the cosmos, the people of the country and the world cried out in the name of space, science, and the sheer beauty of the cosmos. And it worked. The telescope was fixed. And as we approach its 25th anniversary, we know that it has been more than worth it. Fundamentally, space exploration is a mission of the people. It fulfills our human desire to explore. And for that, it is immeasurably valuable. The best part about space, according to the CEO of the Planetary Society, better known as Bill Nye the Science Guy, is that it causes people to believe that any problem they face can be solved. When people believe that, they are inspired. And when they are inspired, anything is possible. Space is truly an inspiring place to so many people, myself included. During my life, my interest in space has led me to my dream career. I want to be an astrophysicist at NASA. I want to be on the cutting edge of the country and the world. More importantly, I want to inspire others to do the same. However, I think that my aspirations of having a thriving space program for future generations will be an uphill battle unless something down here on Earth changes dramatically. For the dreams of our country and the dreams of our world to come true, we need a strong space program and a return to the desire to explore. And we can have that simply through return of funding and therefore emphasis to the programs that make space exploration possible. After all, how much would you pay for the universe? Thank you.